Hello, it's Nemo, and welcome back to Fictional Friday, where I, Nemo, will continue telling you the story from last week, called The Messenger, because you are the messenger. The story is in first person. And if you missed last week's episode, basically the recap for this week is that you are a messenger, a pal of yours from your city, gave you a package to deliver to your old friend whom you haven't seen in a little bit, a little whiles, a minute, as some people would say. Kind of strange because it's not actually a minute. It's been a while, quite some time. So you go across the desert to the next city over, which is 10 miles away, to deliver the package. And when you get there to deliver the package, you get knocked unconscious and you wake up in a bed and so i'm gonna continue the story and i hope that you guys can enjoy it you know it's for us who don't go out on a friday night and so we're out here just trying to chill relax and with that just sit back relax lay down get comfortable and enjoy the story so You wake up, you're on a bed, both of your arms and both of your legs are tied to this bed. Your wrists are tied by rope. You're spread out, both arms tied to the other ends of the headboard and both of your legs spread out, tied to the bedpost on the bottom end of the bed. You come to realize that you're tied to this bed, that no one else is around. You don't hear anyone in the house. You're wondering, what happened? First, you just want to get out. You want to find your camel. You want to escape. You don't know what happened. But you want to find out. But you can't find out by being stuck on this bed in such a vulnerable position. And so you struggle. You pull on each one of your limbs. But the rope tightens. You're struggling. You're pulling as hard as you possibly can. But with each forceful pull, The rope gets tighter around your wrists and your ankles. It hurts. It pains you. Which causes you to thrash even more. Your adrenaline's rushing. And then it... And then you realize... There's no point in fighting. You're only going to hurt yourself more. So you decide to relax, calm down, think about how you're going to escape. Your wrists and your ankles now feel raw where the rope is. So you're thinking now, how are you going to escape? Using force isn't an option, it only makes things worse. So you think of how you're going to escape. You're relaxing now, you're thinking, maybe you can shimmy your wrist and hand through the rope. So, you get, you get hold of your own position onto the bed, and you try to give yourself enough slack to pull your wrist through, then your hand. It's tight now since you've struggled so much, but as long as you can get one finger through, the rest of your hand will go. So you're trying to get your thumb through first. You're struggling, you're struggling, and finally your thumb gets below the rope. You squeeze your hand together and you pull the rest of your hand out. Now your hand is free. You reach over to your other arm, grab the rope, 
try to loosen it and then pull your hand out. Now that you're now that both of your hands are free, you untie your ankles from the rope. You're wondering, should you investigate this house? Should you wait? Should you escape? Part of you doesn't know what to do. You're just confused. But part of you just knows you have to leave. And so you slowly creep out of the room cautiously. You don't want to be spotted. You don't want to get knocked out again. You know that whoever is in this house or was in this house is not friendly towards you. Not anymore, at least. And so you're creeping through the doorway, staying close to the wall, peeking around the corner. You don't see anybody. You don't hear anybody. And so you creep towards the stairs, wondering, is there actually nobody in the house? Hmm. You don't know. So you go down the stairs, one step slowly at a time. And then you hear in the distance a bit of chattering. But it doesn't sound like your old friend. You don't know who it is. And so you lay low. You hide around the corner behind the doorway to see if they'll pass. And so they get closer. You're peeking around the door frame. Are they actually there? Are they coming here? Where are they going? Are they after you? And so you continue waiting. They get closer and closer. Your anxiety goes up. You're starting to sweat a little. But you try to remain calm. You can tell they're coming towards the house. And so, you decide to hide. You go into the closest room on the bottom floor. There's a bin there, so you decide to hide inside of it. Quietly as possible, you sneak into it. That's when you can tell the people that were outside are walking into this house. You're wondering, how am I going to escape now? I've escaped from the bed but now I'm stuck here in this bin. So you wait. They go inside. They go upstairs to the room. You can hear them. That's when you take the chance. You quickly hop out of the bin while you know they're upstairs in the room. You quickly run outside. No one's out there. They're all in the room. Your camel's gone. It's not out there anymore. You're wondering, where did my camel go? That camel is the closest friend that I have on my trips as a messenger. An idea pops in your head. There's a couple that you went to for a wedding a couple months prior. But their house is on the opposite side of town, on the northwest end. You are currently in the east end. You have to escape. Quickly. Silently. Without detection. 
You hear the clamoring going on from the people who were inside. You know they're after you now. You were their prisoner. You decide to book it. Without your camel, you can only you can only run so fast, especially with your wrist and your ankles being wounded. And so you start running. It's evening time now. The sun is still up, but it's starting to set. You know you have to hurry across town. But you decide to make way through the center plaza of town. This town is built like a circle. Plaza in the middle. On the north end, the capital building. Around it, the fancy homes. Everywhere else, just regular homes. So you're booking it towards the plaza. The plaza where there's many merchants, many buyers. Sellers, guards, anything you can think of. People you don't know, have never seen. And as you get closer to this plaza, you can see it. The banners are all over the place. What do these banners mean? You're confused. People look at you a little strangely. You know you're a messenger, they can also tell. You're dressed differently from everyone else. But why? Why are you dressed differently from everyone else? You look like an outsider, you're just dressed like a messenger. The style of the clothing has changed. It's a gown that's off-white with a red sash. For most people, for the guards, their armor is off-white, and their cloaks are red. You know you have to get to the couple's house, so you keep going. Through various alleyways, avoiding detection, now in these back streets, after being in the plaza where everyone could have seen you. No one bothers to do anything, really. They just look at you strangely. So, you go through the alleyways. Keep going. Eventually, you make it to the couple's house. And when you get there, you can tell they're having dinner. It's just the two of them. And so, you make your presence known. And, from the doorway, you clap. It is I, the messenger. Haven't seen you two in a while. And so, they look at you. Slightly shocked, confused, why are you here? You ask, you ask them, what's, ha what's happened to the city? It's changed since I've gone here. They look at you, slightly concerned. They see your wrists, then your ankles. What happened to you? They ask. You tell them what happened. You had a package to deliver. You delivered it. And then you were hit unconscious. Tell them that they're the only ones that you can trust. So, you ask them to tell you. Please, what has happened to this town? 
I've gotten hurt because of it. And so, they tell you everything that's happened. It's strange that you can trust them because your old friend betrayed you. But they openly tell you what happened. They tell you that there's a new ruler in this town. Someone who secretly attacked the old ruler and has gained all of the power in the city. Tell him. What? Is that why there's so many banners around town now that I don't recognize? They tell you that's exactly it. And so, you ask them, what else has happened? He tells you that the new ruler plans on capturing as many outsiders as possible to forge an army to capture everyone else and force them to be slaves. Anyone who wants to work for him will live. Anyone who does otherwise won't. And you ask him, what about you? He tells you that he's agreed to fight for him so that him and his wife could still survive. He tells you that's all they that's all they need are soldiers. You're worried now. Then why did I get knocked out? He tells you it's probably because you're a messenger. You came from outside the city and they don't want everyone else to know what's going on in the city because we're planning to attack the other cities. Now you're shocked. What? This can't be. So you weren't set up. You think about it now. Your old friend did betray you. That was nothing like him before. He was always friendly towards you. That's why you two were friends. You ask the husband, do you know why my old friend betrayed me? He tells you, it's probably because he wants loyalty as a status for the new ruler. He wants to be seen as someone he, that he can trust. He wants to gain from this new era of this new city. You ask the husband now if there's any way that he can help you out. Because you need to escape. You need to go back to your city, warn them, and go back to your family. Then, oddly enough, the husband tells you, yes, he will help you. Because the only reason that he's in this is because he, he wants his family to survive. He hasn't started one yet. They only got married two months ago. And so, you ask him, do you have any idea where my camel is? Unfortunately, he does not know. So you ask him, can you get me a camel? He tells you that's highly unlikely, but he does know where the camels are held. 
They're held in the barracks near the northern end of town. What can you do now? Do you leave without your camel? Do you head back on foot? Ten miles is a long journey. So you need to think of how you're going to get your camel. How do you even find your camel in a city this large? You're puzzled now. You ask the husband, please, I need to get my camel. Can you help me? He tells you he has an idea. You will act as a prisoner while he brings you to the barracks so that you can attempt to find your camel and escape this town. So the husband tells you not to let anyone know that he's helping you. Not to make it obvious. And so you agree. There's nothing else that you could really do. So, he asks you if you want to have any food before you guys leave. You haven't eaten in a while, so you agree. Please. He gives you food. It's just basic chicken, curry, and rice. So after your meal, after a few minutes of resting, you go ahead and go. And so, he ties you up, ties your wrists together, and he's holding the other rope now. He brings you across town to the barracks. He puts you in a cell. He tells you, just wait now. He's seen your camel before. You took your camel to the wedding before. So he knows what your camel looks like. And so you trust him to go find your camel. You look around your cell. There's no one there. No one in this cell. There's people next to your cell and across. But no one else you can recognize. After about 15 or 20 minutes, he comes back. Okay, we need to go down this hall towards the right, immediate left. Your camel will be waiting. And so, that's your escape now. There's nothing left for me. He unlocks the cell, walks off. You wait for him to leave. You open the prison door. You book it. Run down the hall to the right. Immediate left. Straight outside. You run into something. You fall to the ground. Sorry guys, but, you know, another cliffhanger. Sorry, but I've decided that there's going to be three parts. Um, you know, got to keep you guys coming back for more am i right um but yeah guys thanks for watching thanks for listening i know this one's kind of long and i hope that doesn't bother you guys but yeah i wrote out this story and i hope you guys enjoyed it i know my narrating is a little different from you know audiobooks and stuff but I hope you guys enjoyed, and 
come back for next week's because that's the last one of these three-part videos for this story called the messenger because you are the messenger and as always guys just remember to take care of yourself take care of others spread love and peace <laughs>